When it comes to families on television, there are few that have reached the cultural zenith that The Simpsons have. I'm talking a hit television series, a movie, all kinds of licensing agreements, and of course, a bunch of video games. Today, we are looking at every home console release and two on arcades, and we're ranking them all. Hey, big thank you to viewer Colin Baird for the suggestion. I wouldn't have thought of this one. This was a great idea. He dropped a comment last week, and I said I was originally going to get to this in March, but just kind of lived rent-free in my head, and I decided to pick it up and run with it and see how I liked it, and pretty pleased with how it came out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank these worst to best. I have actually had comments on the past in other videos asking if I would do a video that way for a ranking video, and I figured, hey, what the hell, let's give it a shot and see how it goes. So what do you say? Let's kick things off with the worst of the worst. Now, do keep in mind any ranking given is a ranking given against every other Simpsons game, not just an overall cosmic ranking. It's against every other game on this list. So a failure point is a failure for the Simpsons games, not necessarily overall in the grand scheme of things. With that said, let's kick things off. Sadly for me, the ones that happen to be the worst of the worst are the handhelds, and we're kicking things off with Bart Simpson's Escape from Camp Deadly. Now, the biggest problem that Camp Deadly has is that it's just slow. It's not fun. The jumping isn't well done. The way I was playing it, I wasn't really sure exactly what I was supposed to do or how I was supposed to get different weapons. I couldn't fight any of the enemies. I just kind of paused them on screen. It was kind of annoying. The graphics look really good for a Game Boy game, I will say that. Like, visually, this game is really, really good. And the music in the game is good. But the gameplay just takes a nosedive. Like, every problem the NES games have, and there are plenty that the NES games have, this one just compounds that to the nth degree. You have a smaller visual space, so it's harder to maneuver around enemies, it's harder to make your jumps, the jumps just don't seem to go as far, or the hitboxes for landing just don't seem to work as well, so it ends up being an incredibly miserable experience to play. Though I will say, impressive digitized voice audio for a Game Boy game. Really well done. I'm giving Bart Simpson's Escape from Camp Deadly an F. Hi, caramba! Kind of a 1F and 2F situation here, but if I really had to think about it, I probably should have put this one first, because Bart and the Beanstalk... Oh my lord. This game's painful. And I think the reason I'm putting it a little bit beyond Escape from Camp Deadly is that at least the combat is clear. I understand what I'm supposed to do. The gameplay is still terrible. The graphics are good. They're not as good as Camp Deadly, but they're good. But the gameplay, at least I understand when there's an enemy on screen, I know what I'm doing. It's just getting there is really, really hard to discern. So. There are certain leaves on the beanstalk that are going to help you jump, but you can't really tell what they are. They only kind of stand out on the background of the Game Boy screen. The combat itself is okay. It's not great. It's just okay. And I will say the enemy designs are pretty good. That's, that's kind of nice, but overall, just another miserable experience. Bart and the Beanstalk as well is going to get an F. It's... It is better than some other Game Boy games I have played. There are some true Game Boy stinkers out there, but this one just not a great experience, not super fun. Now, straight up, I was fully prepared to hate this game. I had never played The Simpsons Wrestling before, and I expected this to be the worst of everything I played, because everyone that commented on my posts about this was saying how terrible of a game it was, and yeah, it's bad. It's not a good game by any stretch of the imagination, but it is nowhere near as bad as the first two games that I've played so far. It's mindless. That's its biggest sin, is the fact that there is zero strategy involved in this game. It is 1,000% a button match. It... I, I say it doesn't really pay attention to the rules of wrestling, but I mean, it's a Simpsons version of wrestling, so it really shouldn't pay attention to any kind of rules, but... You, you can I mean you can pin somebody with their shoulders, you know, point it up to the sky, but whatever. There's a certain amount of charm in the game, but not enough to keep it from being anything other than a mindless cash grab based on the Simpsons license. It's not good. It is very close to an F. I'm going to give it a D- minus because it's just like an iota better than Camp Deadly and Bart and the Beanstalk, but yeah, not a great experience. The Simpsons wrestling is bad. The biggest issue that The Simpsons Bart vs. the Space Mutant has is that it's poorly thrown together as to what you're supposed to do. Like, the idea of the game is that you collect spray paint and you turn everything purple red. That's, that's the entire goal of the game. But the hitboxes aren't great, the controls aren't great, the idea behind it, like, 
where you're supposed to stand in order to paint the things isn't really spelled out all that well. So it ends up being kind of a mess and kind of a cluster of just inching forward trying to find the right spot in order to spray the paint to get the thing turn red. It's not good. I was really close to giving this one an F, I'm going to be honest with you, but there are things that it does that it does better than the Game Boy games, and it's a significantly better experience overall than Simpsons Wrestling. So, Bart vs. the Space Mutants is going to get a D. It's, it's a bad game, don't get me wrong. It, it is not a good experience. It is a very bad game, but it is at least better than those other three. Bart's Nightmare does one thing incredibly well. It is gorgeous. Like, the animation cycle on Bart as he's walking around is beautifully well done. I just have no idea what the hell I'm supposed to do. There's no indication as to what's supposed to happen in this game. You're just shoved into this level, Jebediah Springfield's head is rolling along the ground and can hit you, mailboxes attack you, you kind of have weapons, you can spit watermelon seeds or bubbles at things, but there's no... Oh god. Like, it gets points for looking good and sounding good, but from a gameplay perspective, this is as bad as some of the Game Boy games. It's it's a terrible experience overall. Bart's Nightmare is going to get a D. It should probably be worse, but it's lucky it's pretty. Another game on the Super Nintendo, this is Virtual Bart, and I have a feeling that this one, if I had gotten a different level... I actually don't know if I can get different levels now that I'm talking about this audio. So here, this one gets a gigantic asterisk. There's always one game on these ranking lists that someone's just like, you're stupid, you did it wrong. This could be the one where I'm stupid and I did it wrong. But the level I was given when I started this game out was where I was playing Baby Bart. And what a terrible first impression. First off, like, the idea behind this, him, him swinging from the tree limbs... And trying to control that and land and be able to grab them and move through the level is so poorly done, is so poorly designed, and so poorly implemented that I almost immediately wanted to turn it off. And like like I said, I just realized that I might be able to get a different level as my first level as I play, but I have no desire to go back and play this because this was such a bad first impression. Virtual Bart is getting a D, which is a shame because some of the levels that I saw, like the back of box artwork and some of the videos I saw of the game, looked really fun. But that initial level is terrible. The game name is a mouthful, but The Simpsons' Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror is disappointing if for no other reason than this is the only Treehouse of Horror game we've gotten so far. And The Treehouse of Horror is one of my personal favorite things. It is one of the things I look forward to every Halloween season. And to get a game that is full of promise, and don't get me wrong, this one gets knocked down because the idea is so good, and I was so excited to try this game out, but the way it works and the way it plays just does not click for me. And it could be that this is something I need to spend more time with to figure out. Like, this is the one, out of everything that I reviewed on this video, this is the one I'm most curious about and I'm most interested in going back to, because I feel like I've just missed something here, and that's a shame. But Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror is a good idea. The graphics look good. It's a great entry on the Game Boy Color. The controls are actually pretty good. The getting onto the stairs is a little iffy, but the way it just ends up shaking out, it just I just did not have fun with it. So, with an asterisk, this one is going to get a D, with the caveat that I'm going to be going back to it and playing it more, especially at Halloween season this year. Oh, what might have been with the Itchy and Scratchy game. I I wanted so badly for this one to be good. Luckily, we do get a great entry from Itchy and Scratchy later on in this list, but this one here, the Itchy and Scratchy game, just falls to pieces. It looks good for what it is, and there's a plethora of weapons to collect, which is what you'd expect from an Itchy and Scratchy game, but the gameplay is atrocious. It's repetitive. It's boring. The levels are not designed well. And it's just a snooze fest to play. It's not fun. I have to give this one a C minus. It's just, just about average. It's just what a poor, poor attempt for two characters that could have been something really, really special. On to the C's now, and this is one I recently got in from Video Games Monthly. This is The Simpsons Bart vs. the World. And this is a continuation on the engine of Bart vs. the Space Mutants. And the thing it does mercifully is it takes out the stupid spray paint mechanic, and it actually tosses in some pretty clever gameplay. 
Now, the gameplay is average. I, I will say that. It's not great. There's still a lot of the problems that were exhibited in Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Like, there's some problems with the locomotion. There's some problems with kind of the hitboxes and just the overall controls. But the different weapons you're able to get work really well. Each world has a different series of levels that you have to get through. Like, there's a platforming level. There's a slide puzzle level. There's a trivia level. There's a skateboarding level. And they're all fairly well done. At the end of the day, the game averages out to be an average game, and that's okay. It could have been significantly worse, but I'm going to tell you, I actually have a lot of fun with this one. The Simpsons Bart vs. the World is going to get a C. The best entry on the original Game Boy goes to The Simpsons Bart vs. the Juggernauts, and the thing I like about this is that it, it taps really well into like that early 90s nostalgia, because it's not only The Simpsons, which is right up my alley, but it's also American Gladiators, which I think is really clever. Is it great? No, at the end of the day, it's pretty average, but I think the idea is is pretty fun. There's a bunch of different games that you can do, like there's a obstacle course in Apu's Quickie Mart. There's a game where you launch yourself off of a skateboard ramp and try to knock someone off of a platform, kind of like you would have with the pugil sticks in the original American Gladiators. There's one called Hop, Skip, and Fry, which I really don't like because the tiles just kind of randomly change, and that didn't really entice me to have any kind of fun with it at all, but I do think, overall, this game is actually pretty good. It does end up being average because there are just certain things that it just... It's a little too ambitious for its own good, and to me, this almost feels like a Simpsons version of WayForward's Extreme Sports. Just not nearly as good. I'm going to give this one a C. It, it ends up being average, but there's a lot of promise here. And it's something that I wish they kind of would have picked up and ran with, because it's a really clever usage of the license. All right, halfway through, and here's where we stand. On now to the bees, and we're starting off on the NES with Bartman meets Radioactive Man. And if ever there was a particular aspect of Simpsons that should be a game, it's this. And the next one coming up. But Bartman is perfect for a platform. And the idea behind this game actually works. Now, I wish it was using a better engine than what it does, because it still has all of the flaws that were present from Bart vs. the World and Bart vs. the Space Mutants with issues with the locomotion, issues with the hitboxes, issues with the overall controls, and that takes a lot of fun out of it. But the powers that you're able to collect, the enemies that you fight, the navigation through the levels, the level design is actually pretty good. And I think that raises this one up. I'm giving it a B. It is above average, but I say that as an above average game for The Simpsons. In the grand scheme of things, this is probably a little bit lower. This is probably a C or maybe a C- minus in the overall pantheon of NES games, but as a Simpsons game, I'm going to give it a B. Heading off to the arcades now, and this is The Simpsons Bowling. And this one has no right to be as much fun as it is, but this is such a perfect use of The Simpsons IP. Like, talk about thinking outside of the box, and we're actually getting to a point now where we're going to see a lot of Simpsons games thinking outside of the box and not just going tried and true platformer methodology. We have something here with the Simpsons bowling that leans into the pin pals aspect of the Simpsons. And it gives you a trackball based game that works and works really well. Now it's no golden tea. It's not something to that level of fidelity, but Konami made something pretty, pretty fun here. I actually really like this one. This is one that for me, if I see it at an arcade, I make sure I play it because it's just, it's just fun. And it's great to be able to play as these signature Simpsons characters doing an activity that you get to see them do in the show. I'm going to give The Simpsons Bowling a B. I actually think this is a really fun game. I know some people don't enjoy it, but for me, this one's really good. A handheld game that just works, and the only thing that brings it down is some of the visuals on the game. And this is The Simpsons Road Rage for the GBA. Now, in most cases, I didn't cover handheld versions of games that released on Gen 6 and later for this video, but there was something really special about this. Now, Simpsons Road Rage as an idea is basically the Simpsons Crazy Taxi, and it just works. It's absolutely brilliant. And I fully expected the GBA version of this game to not be fun. 
and instead I got a really solidly designed Mode 7 version of Crazy Taxi that works really well. It's not perfect. Like I said, the graphics get a little bit muddy and don't really work from time to time. It just kind of falls to pieces. But from a gameplay perspective, this game's really, really good. I can't recommend this one enough. This is a really fun license title that I think a lot of people would really enjoy. Simpsons Road Rage for the GBA is going to get a B. Now here is where Itchy and Scratchy really show their worth. This is the Simpsons Itchy and Scratchy in Miniature Golf Madness. And once I figured out how to play, and basically what I mean is once I realized that they told me how to play on the opening screen and I should have been paying attention, this game opened up to me and I realized how fantastic it is. You play as Itchy. I actually don't know. Is Itchy the cat or the mouse? I'm going to say he's the cat. So you play as Itchy and you are going through a miniature golf course and as you go through, you're going to get attacked by Scratchy. Now, you're able to hit him, you're able to kill him, you're able to fight and fight and fight and fight and fight, 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 because it's the Itchy and Scratchy show. And the gameplay itself is just really well done. Like, I had never played this before I did this video, and I see a lot of Cursed to Golf in this game. Like, similar level design ideas, similar concepts, like, this is a little bit more absurdist than Cursed to Golf, but... There's a core here that I can see some inspiration being laid to that game. Now, I could be completely wrong on that, but to me, that's what it feels like. I really, really like this one. I can't recommend this one enough. The Simpsons Itchy and Scratchy in Miniature Golf Madness is gonna get an A. Moving over now to the SNES for something that I did not expect to enjoy. This is Krusty's Super Fun House, and this is a puzzle game, a very well-designed puzzle game where you need to get rats into the rat murder machine that Bart is running for Krusty. Yes, it's very much a Simpsons game, but it works. Like, the ability to explore these levels and to collect items to help you navigate and to move the mice or the rats through the level to get them to the rat incinerator, I don't know exactly what it is, I'm just going to keep calling it strange things, just works. It feels a little bit like Lemmings. It's like reverse Lemmings. And I love it. I had so much fun playing this. This is one that I just could not believe was as good as it is. And I was shocked I had not played it for as long as I had. Krusty's Super Fun House is brilliant. If you have not played it, you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. Because it's a really, really fun game. I'm giving Krusty's Super Fun House an A. Boy, here's another one that works a lot better than it has any right to. This is The Simpsons Skateboarding. Now, it is no Tony Hawk. It's no skate by any stretch of the imagination, but it feels a lot like Disney Extreme Skateboarding Adventure, I think that's what it was called, which is a wonderful licensed game and a wonderful skateboarding game featuring Disney characters. It feels a lot like that. Like, it's a little bit loose, it's a little bit flighty, but as far as skateboarding games go, the mechanics are really solid. You get to pull off tricks, you're told how to pull off the tricks in the tutorial, the level designs are really fun, the characters are great, the kind of crap talking from Principal Skinner as you play is really funny. I just think this one's really good. I could be completely wrong on this. Like, I might just be an easy sell on skateboarding games and I'm just having fun because it's silly and it's over the top and it's ridiculous. And if you're a serious skateboarding fan and you really like stuff like that's heavy sim-based, like, well, I can't even say it's sim-based, it's skate. But if you like stuff like Skate, this game might not fly for you. I, I happen to like Skate and enjoy it, but your mileage may vary. But for me, I think Simpsons Skateboarding is actually pretty fun. I'm going to give it an A. 50-50 grind. On now to one of my personal favorites, and it, it hurts me to not have this at an S, but looking at it objectively, it is an A game. It's above average. It's really good. It's excellent even, but there are some things that really bring the Simpsons game back. Now, the writing in this game is magnificent. It feels like an episode of The Simpsons come to life. The game is absurdist humor. The gameplay is really well done. What brings it back and what grinds it to a halt at times is the terrible camera work. There are certain points where the camera just stops functioning, where it will get stuck behind a wall, where you have no idea what you need to do, where exploring is impossible just because the camera does not want to cooperate. And that really takes me out of the game. 
and I had forgotten about it. I hadn't played this in a while. So coming back to this and seeing it again and kind of getting that harsh dose of reality slapped to the face of this game you love has some really terrible aspects to it. Sucked. And it did bring me out of it and it did bring it back a ranking. So as much as I love it and as excellent as I think it is and as much of it is being one of my favorite games, I have to give The Simpsons game an A. I want to give it an S. My heart gives it an S. My head gives it an A. If you're scoring at home, you can probably figure out what the s rank games are because they haven't come up yet, but we'll just hop right into it. First up is The Simpsons Road Rage, and as many flaws as this game has, and there are numerous ones to it, the gameplay just makes it something that I have to keep coming back to, that I have to keep playing because it is fantastic. As someone who loves Crazy Taxi, taking that idea and slapping The Simpsons license on it with a bunch of different vehicles from the series, a bunch of different characters from the series, all the voice actors from the series being present, the town of Springfield being navigatable, sort of. There are some collision issues that you'll run into, but for me, even with all of those issues that I experienced, this is one of my favorite games because it is just so much damn fun to play. It keeps you coming back by giving you different things to unlock as you play, whether that's different cars, different tracks, different missions. There are always things there for you to build in replay value, to build in fun, to build in something you want to keep coming back to. I have loved this game since the first time I played it. It is one of my favorite Simpsons games. I am giving The Simpsons Road Rage an S. The Simpsons Road Rage is what happens if you take The Simpsons and you push it into the Crazy Taxi universe, and The Simpsons Hit and Run is what happens if you take The Simpsons and you slap them into the GTA universe, and just like Road Rage, it works. The game isn't without its issues. I don't think anyone is going to tell you that it's a perfect game, but in the grand scheme of things, this game is magnificent. The level designs and the characters are fantastic. The different missions that you get to go on aren't just like kind of a Simpsonized version of a GTA mission, they are straight out of episodes of The Simpsons. Like, why did Homer have to eat all of the ice cream for breakfast? He needs to go get more breakfast ice cream. It's stuff like that that really puts you in the setting of being in Springfield, in the characters' lives, and completing these different missions that is really fun. The driving mechanics are great. The jumping around and collecting things in the character mode is really fun. It feels like a cartoon come to life. It's the best compliment I can pay it, because it feels just like The Simpsons should feel if they were a video game. The Simpsons Hit and Run absolutely gets an S. Shocking probably nobody, number one with a bullet, is The Simpsons arcade game. I can sit here and talk for hours about how much I love this title, and it's something that I have played constantly since the first time I saw it, at Mike Greenwell's Battleball Family Fun Park in Cape Coral, Florida. It was a game that I was just immediately enamored with because The Simpsons were an ever-present part of my life from the time they debuted on The Tracy Ullman Show to today. It is something I go back to constantly. Whether I'm at an arcade or I play it on MAME, it is a game that I love, that I have fun with, that I think is brilliantly designed, and stands shoulder to shoulder with some of the best beat-em-up games ever released. This is as much fun as a game like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Double Dragon, or Final Fight. It is wonderful. It is silly, it is ridiculous, it is excellent, it is the best of the best. The Simpsons Arcade gets an S+. All right, there you have it, my friends. Every Simpsons game released on home consoles and in arcades ranked worst to best. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree, disagree, what your opinions are on any of the games that I played that just didn't connect with me or that I loved. I'd love to hear a difference of opinion. Until next time, folks, I've been Jay. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if there are other things you would like to see me rank in the future, drop a comment in the comments down below. I'll definitely take a look. Remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.